Today on Ask This Old House. I'll show you how to repair some old drawers on a dining room built-in. They stick a little bit, but I think we can make those slide easier, but we can definitely fix those chips on the front of the drawer. Yeah, I need some help. This room has no overhead light. I'll fix that. So this little guy will put a beam on the X we just made, mm -hmm. and he'll put a dot on the ceiling to show us exactly where that light's gonna go. Okay. <laughs> and we'll have a look at some more home inspection nightmares. Here's one right here, Mark. Now they, oh, they, wow. they, they clearly <laughs> need to watch a little yeah. more of you on yes, TV. Yes, I think so. The best part about it is that foam is probably taking all the water into the joints. Oh, perfect. Yes. Yeah, so he's creating more of a problem than a fix. Yeah. Hi hey there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to Ask This Old House where our experts are standing by ready to answer questions about your old house. Heath, good to see you here and good to see you here early. Kevin, it's great to be here. Yeah, well we love having you aboard. Master Electrician on the team always helps. You've been working with us since the uh, North Shore Farmhouse a few years yep. back. Most recently, Brookline Mid-Century Modern. That was a great project, a lot oh, of fun. That was a big one, right? It was. And now are you ready to dig into the mailbag and start and helping And now we yours? have some emails to answer. Love it. You're hey, right. fresh meat. <laughs> Remember when you were the new guy? Barely. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Thank you. Good to so be I here. had a question. I got a dimmer. that I, I touch, Wait, It just okay. doesn't dim. Um, just doesn't his dimmer could wait. I need some low voltage landscape lighting, pass so lights, up lights. He so. has real questions he needs to answer from the, from the viewers. Yeah, but I saw the schedule. Tommy's up first. We can actually take a few minutes here. <laughs> Uh, so come on in, Tommy. Yeah, this is nice. Thanks. Uh, this is a house we bought it a few years ago. The, house, the original part of the house was actually built in the 1920s and uh, 1930s. Nice modern kitchen, big range, hood. I love the island. Yeah, we added this kitchen in and the uh, uh, living room as well as the bedroom upstairs. We really just needed a little bit more space. You always need a little more space. And I see that you've matched the casing detail to the original part of the house. That's a nice touch. Yeah, we did our best to respect the original part of the house. You have a good eye. But I was hoping you can also take a look um, at this uh, built-in. Yeah. Um, it's uh, seen better days. Seen better days. Well, these built-ins are pretty common in the houses built in the 30s and the 40s. It's a great place to store your wine glasses, dishes, and even your drinks. <laughs> uh, and I see that the, uh, yeah, these drawers slide a little hard. But what I think we can fix those up a little bit and you have some chips on the corner. Yeah. Well, I think we can fix those too. Yeah, that'd be great, that'd be perfect for us. All right, let's get some tools and we can get started. Sounds good. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. Best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. All right, there's the first drawer right there. Wow, that's it? It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. I mean, it's a butt joint in the back. Right. All boards are probably cut with hand tools, and there's just nails right through to hold the back in place. And in the front right here, the only complicated cut is this rabbit, which allows them to nail through the side into the front. This is one piece. Now, I could actually make a whole new front, but I think it would be nice if we try to straighten this break out take all the undulation out of it, make it a flat surface so we can glue a piece on there and see if we can blend it in. Sounds pretty straightforward. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna use my plane. So that's nice and flat. We'll check it with a piece of wood here. Joint looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks straight to me. All right, so I'll put a rough mark for the length right here. Mm -hmm. And I want to get the depth of this to match down there, so I just take it, bring it over here, mark that, and now I go from this point down to nothing. All right, so now I'll just connect some dots there and cut it with a handsaw. We're going to make it a little oversized and then fine tune it all later. Mm -hmm. 
So now what I want to do is I want to mark the thickness for this front right here. So I'm going to put it on. I'm going to slide it over, making this edge even with the back edge of the face. Put it on there like that. I'm going to take a rough measurement and draw a line, the thickness that I want. Right there. Bring that down. There's my straight line, and I'll cut this piece right here. And to cut it, I'm going to lay my straight edge on it. All right. You're going to cut it with that? Yeah. I'm going to score it a few times, break through the grain, and hopefully the piece will be what we need. Okay, and there's our piece. Let's try it out, see how it fits. Yep, yeah, that looks pretty good. Looks flush to me. Okay. So now I'm just going to glue it, and we can put the piece on and clamp it. All right, while that's drying, we'll put the patch on the other one. Okay, so now this piece that was left over from the other side, we're going to put it right in there, like that. Right. I'm going to mark that angle, and then we'll cut it. Okay. So now score it lightly, because that blade will want to wander with the grain. Keep it up and down straight. Yep. All right, now let's see how it fits. Lay All that right. on there. Set it in place. Yeah. Not bad. I think we're ready to glue it. All right. That's good. We want to get all that wood, right? That all showing. Right. Yeah. Yep. Good. All right. Let's get the piece, let it in there, and we'll clamp it. Now keep it flush on the back. Yep, on the back. Yep. There. Yep. Flush all on. lined up. Good. Okay. And we push it in a little. All right, so while the glue is drying, I want to give it as much time as possible to set up and dry. You complained about the draw sticking a little bit, so we'll hit the bottom of those with a plane. Keep the plane at a slight angle back this way, and I'll adjust this back a little bit so we don't take too much. Across the front. Down the side. All right, so that's good. Now I want to lubricate the bottom of the drawer with some soap. A bar soap? Yeah, that's an old trick they used to do years ago. They used to put soap on anything that slide because it's a wood-to-wood -wood connection. Mm -hmm. And it actually makes it slide easier. Who would have thought? So Tommy, could we have put in metal slides here? Well, we would have had to rework the drawers themselves or actually build new boxes. And this is a really a cost-effective way to save money and make the drawers work. And allows us to keep the originals, which yep. we're looking for. Exactly. All right, so the glue is almost ready, but I, before I remove the clamps, I want to try to match this profile right here in the edge with this new piece. I'm going to use my plane first just to even it up on the edge. Just take this little bit right here and use a rasp and take it down. Work my way down to it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, now we'll do the top edge. Now we'll take the clamps off. See if we can fine tune this one. So now we want to match this profile right here and return it down across the top. To do that, I'm going to have to draw a reference line 
to know where I want to stop it, which is going to be right there. So now I want to remove this material here. Now, I can't use this plane right here because the blade doesn't come all the way out to the edge because I want to use a straight edge to guide my plane. So I'm going to use this plane right here, a rabbiting plane, or also known as a shoulder plane. And that will allow me to put a straight edge on the draw where I want this plane to go. And I can put the plane right against it and plane off the wood, and I'll have a nice straight cut. To smooth out the edges, I'll just hit them with some 220 grit sandpaper. All right, Kristen, once that prime is dry, if you can get some paint and paint it, they'll blend right in. Sounds good. We have some of the paint in the basement, actually. Fantastic. So this looks incredible, and I mean, the drawers pull so much smoother. How often do I have to reapply the soap? Well, it depends on how often you use the drawers. Usually two, three, four years later, you might need a little bit of soap, so here's some soap if you need it. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. I'm sure I'm going to need that. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad I could help. All right. Thank you so much. Looks amazing. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app. And join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. For over a year, we have asked inspectors to send us pictures of their worst home improvement nightmares. But we also asked you, the viewer, to send us pictures as well. And boy, did you respond. What did we get, boys? You know, we see it all. You know, many of them are plumbing related, people trying to do their own plumbing. Danny from Florida sends us this oh. one. So, you know, the corrugated plastic, you know, you can take exception to that. And this is all corroded. But, you know, you've heard the term, any port in a storm? This is any glove in a storm. He's oh, got a latex glove. What that is? And you know what? It worked. It's right. You stop the water, right? <laughs> That's all. But look at this. Nancy from Indiana. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. Nancy. Wow. Oh, Nancy. Oh, now, oh, Nancy. Look at, now, that's an old house, all right? Yeah, look definitely. at the skip sheathing on the roof. One time that had um, a wood shingled roof, and you can see how bad it was leaking oh, right there. Water damage, and right. notice the chimney's diagonal. So the chimney's probably diagonal. There's probably a coal stove right below it and maybe a parlor or Oh, stuck in the corner room. of a yep. room, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we came up at an angle. I didn't know really what to do to get out of the house safely and, again, watertight. So that's probably why you have all that damage. They brought it down to something solid, you can yeah. see. And then I don't think they really knew what they were doing when they had to go back up. No, so. I mean, this is not an uncommon situation, right. but he didn't have a clue on how to rotate yeah. the brick I and bring it I think you guys are missing the most important part right here and the explanation. Oh, a case well, of beer. That explains it. That explains it. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Case of beer. All right. All right. Well, here, here, here's one right here, Mark. Now they, oh, oh, wow. they, they clearly need to watch a little <laughs> yeah. more of you on yes, TV. Yes, I think so. Because you know they probably what had a that? draft. Can you find the insulation? So, that's, oh, that's yes, what it the is. It's a drafty window. Why not insulate the brick? The best part about it is that foam is probably taking all the water into the joints. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So he's creating more of a problem than a fix. Yeah, yeah. but if he scrapes oh. it off, makes it flush with a wire brush, he can paint that gray. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't think we're going to find any shortage <laughs> wow. of these pictures. That's bad. <laughs> that, all right. That's well, really apparently bad. people will do anything, and when they do, we'd love to see it. So keep those pictures coming to us, and maybe they'll end up on home inspection nightmares. It's bowing out. Hi, Heath. Thanks for coming. Hi, Caitlin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. This is a great house. Thank you. We've lived here for three years. Um, we have a 10-month-old, but we're also expecting another baby. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, we have four bedrooms total, but we don't need all four. So we want to turn this bedroom into a dining room. Um, I have my great-grandmother's table that my husband refinished, and we needed a place to showcase it. But the problem is that we have only this one light switch for this light. Okay. And then to turn this other one on, you have to go all the way around the table just to come over here. So it's not great. Got it. So you're looking at a couple of floor lamps trying to light this room up, and it's just not adequate for what you're looking for. Absolutely. Got it. So we want to put an overhead light. Um, we'd like to put a chandelier over our table. OK. I think we can do that. Let me grab some tools, take a look at what we have, and we'll go from there. Awesome. Great. Thank Thanks. you. 
So let me show you what we have. The first thing we did is we turned power off to the circuit. Then we pulled the receptacle out of the wall to see what we have for a wiring. Uh, we have two wires in this configuration. One is providing you with constant power. That's feeding this lower portion of the receptacle. The second one is being used as what's called a switch leg. So what they would do is they'd send power up one wire, up our wall, over to our switch. And when you turn the switch on, it lets power come back over and make the top half of this receptacle live. Okay. That's how we're able to turn the lamp on when you walk in and flip the switch. What we're going to do is we're going to use that wire, reuse the switch leg, and we're going to make it a constant feed. That way we have constant power in that box for the switch. Mm -hmm. By doing that, uh, we're going to replace this receptacle, make this receptacle constant power as well. Okay. And then we're going to take a new wire out of the switch, up the wall, over to where our new ceiling light's going to go. Okay. So what we want to do next is figure out where the ceiling light's going to go. In this case, the table's going to dictate that. Mm -hmm. So we put a little tape in the middle so we can mark the center of the table. So now what we're going to do is we're going to mark the ceiling. And to do that, we're going to use a plumb laser. So this little guy will put a beam on the X we just made. Mm -hmm. And it'll put a dot on the ceiling to show us exactly where that light's going to go. Okay. All right. And now that we've made our mark on the ceiling, we're going to go ahead and use this rod to see what's up on that ceiling before we go ahead and drill a hole. Okay. Since most boxes that we're going to use are going to be a four inch diameter, and we're not sure which one we're going to use yet until we see what's up there, we're going to bend this to a little over two inches, maybe two and a half, just to give us some clearance. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to bend the other end in the same direction so we know which way it's pointing. Next, we're going to poke a small pilot hole where our mark is. And now we'll insert our tester that'll tell us what's up in this ceiling. So by spinning this, I can feel the resistance. And if you watch, we can see that we're stopping on a piece up there. That means we're up against the joist in this case. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That just tells us what's up there and to be careful when we drill. Okay. So it looks like what we have here is just a piece of strapping. We'll just finish cutting that out of the way and then we'll work on installing our box. I'll remove the old switch and cut a second hole to allow us to fish the new wire from the fixture back to the switch. I put this piece of marker tape here to tell me I'm close to the hole, so you should be feeling something right about now. Yep, I think I got it. All right, just pull that right out. Right. Perfect. Next, we're going to tie the wire on, and I'll pull it back towards me. Okay. Now that it's taped up, you're going to feed this end, and I'm going to pull it from this side. And there we go. We have our wire. I want to anchor our box to the structure. And since the hole in the center of the room falls between two joists, the best way to do that is using an old work fan brace. It feeds up through the hole. And as I twist it to expand its length, each end of the bracket has teeth that bite into the joist, securing it into the structure. The feet help keep the bar at the correct height off of the drywall. Once the bar is tightened, I can position the bracket mount over our hole and attach the box to it. We'll just align the box and bracket and secure with a couple of screws. By pulling our fixture wire down to the switch box, we can begin to rewire the switch. There we go. Perfect. For a metal box, we need to bond the ground wire directly to the box and to the switch. And next we're going to replace the receptacle. 
So as you can see, we have a ground screw, this green one for the ground wire. We have a couple of silver screws that would be for the neutral. And then we have two brass screws that are for the hot wire. And in this case, this is a complete receptacle that still has the tab intact. So you can actually just put one black wire to this, one feed, and it would feed both sides of this because it has that tab. And on yours, they broke the tab, which was good because they wanted constant power on one side and controlled by the switch on the other. So in this case, we're just going to put it back so both sides are constant power. All right, so this is the light fixture you chose? Mm -hmm. Great. So it looks like we have a little assembly to do. We'll just put the chain on, a couple of mounting points. We'll hang it on the ceiling and we'll take a look. All right, the power's on. Want to give it a shot? Oh, it looks great. It does look good. I love it. And we even put a dimmer in okay. so we can set the level. Nice. Wonderful. The other thing we did is when we had to cut the hole in the ceiling in order to get the wire down to the switch, we used a hole saw. The advantage of this is for us, we can put the patch back in the hole and it's easier to fill and sand afterwards. Okay. Hopefully you guys can take care of that. We can definitely handle that. All right. Thank you so much, Heath. It looks great. We Thank love it. Thank you. Nice job, Heath. And you got your first ass segment underneath your belt. We did. Thanks. So I got a question for you. When you took that feeler bit, you went up into the ceiling mm -hmm. and it ended up being a piece of strapping, which you could cut away. Right. Had it not been strapping, it had been the joist, for example, and you didn't want to cut it away, then what? New location? No, nope, it's perfectly fine to make a box for every application. If that were the case, if we landed on the joist, we probably ought to use something like this, a pancake box. Oh, okay. And we can use this because? Because it's shallow. So we can actually mount that directly to the joist had we landed right on it. Oh, I see. Still would have held the uh, fixture perfectly fine. Thickness of the drywall right there? Exactly. Perfect. Love that. Solution for every problem. And a couple of other things we ran into with this particular room is this is still treated as a bedroom. Even though we're using it as a dining room, it's legally a bedroom. And so why does that matter? The difference is the wiring that's typically in that room. So in a bedroom, we're going to have 14 gauge wire more times than not. Yep. This is allowed to run the receptacles and the lights. And it's pretty common to do it that way. Tied in together. Exactly. Yep. In a new dining room, you have to use 12 gauge wire. 20 amp circuit for the receptacles. So a heavier load wire. Correct. Why is that? Because I usually think of this as something for the kitchen, not... Treat the dining room like an extension of the kitchen. If you're entertaining, you gotta bring crock pots, heating elements, that kind of oh, thing in there. Interesting. So did we have to switch to this wire in this case? We didn't. So because it's still legally a bedroom, yeah. we're able to take that 14 gauge wire, come out of the receptacle, go up to the switch and feed that light with the existing circuit. Perfect. Good to know. All right. Thank you, Heath. Uh, and that's it from us. Until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Heath Eastman. For Ask This Old House. So I also have a breaker that keeps going on. Um, yeah. What are you I have doing? I schedule to keep, too. Shameless. <laughs> Landscape Shameless. lighting. It's easy. It'll, it'll be quick. It'll be easy. Oh, I'm going to have to get a little bit more light. Yeah. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.